Good morning, traders, and welcome to this live weekly strategy or intraday strategy webinar on SP Trade Desk. Um, today is Tuesday, March 10th. Lots to discuss, guys. Lots going on in the market here, so uh, we'll keep it a little brief today. Um, DXY, Sterling, Dollar Swiss, Gold, Aussie, Kiwi, Dollar CAD, Crude, and who could leave out SPX? Those are the ones that I'm focusing right now. Uh, we'll hit Euro in there as well. And uh, feel free to throw out any questions or trade setups. Uh, hello, Michael. Hope you are doing well. I'm on time. Hey, man, great to see you in the room. Um, you know, a little issue there yesterday with the uh, the time change, but what a difference a day can make, huh? Uh, stocks are poised to open about 900 points higher on the Dow after last uh, yesterday's 2,000 point drop, largest point value drop in history, uh, largest nominal percentage drop since. Um, the financial crisis, really interesting uh, levels here. So uh, let's jump right in. Here's the DXY weekly. I showed you guys this yesterday. Uh, the focus group or the focus uh, support zone for the weekly close, still 90, um, 95.46 into 95.66. That's the 2019 low week close and objective 38.2 of the entire 2017 advance, or excuse me, 2018 advance uh, and slope. Now, obviously, we've already taken out last year's low on that stretch yesterday. Weekly chart just needs to stress the weekly close here. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention again for anyone who might have missed the webinar yesterday. Daily chart looks like this. Um, again, 95.15 at November 2017 high. Still holding support for now. The upslope, okay, the 50 line, or the 25% line of this ascending formation that we were following still offering some support we, in fact we closed there yesterday right there here's the rebound at the end of the day okay 9650 uh, let me take that back 9614 initial resistance right now it's going to be your objective 2019 open but this year's open the bigger level 9650 okay bearish invalidation i'd still leave at 9711 um just a bigger pivot in price, it would take us back above the median line, which was put us back in the upslope. So I'm going to favor leaving our broader bearish inval there. Ideal scenario, we don't get any strength surpassing the early open before, um, before spilling. Now, that said, if this upslope is going to hold, okay, um, well, I just said anyway, 96.50 would be near-term resistance. Bearish invalidation at 97.11. Here's what the intraday chart looks like. And here's why 97.11 makes a little bit more sense to me. So this is the 240, guys. Remember, we were following this formation all throughout January, all throughout February. End of February, crack to the downside. It's been uh, a shot down ever since. Here's initial resistance at 96.17. Uh, Yearly open, 96.50. That would take you outside of slope at this point, outside, outside that descending channel. And then this is why 97.11 to me, sort of a bigger shot for your bearish inval. Again, I don't want to see price up here, but I need to define and le label the levels well. Listen, when the market's this volatile, we don't have time, right? We need to know what's going to automatically change our, 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 our assumptions. So that would be 97.11 on the index. Downside support, still the key zone that we were just looking for in this last stretch, 94.27, 94.08 is a 50 of the entire advance. So uh, a quick reminder, and we'll go over this when we talk over uh, talk about the SPX later. You know, you look at the SPX and how it reacted yesterday. It's sort of starting the week in a very similar scenario. You slam down on Monday with a massive range. I mean, we put 2,000 points on the Dow yesterday. Give me a break. You spend the next couple of days whipsawing 1,000 points up, 1,000 points down, 500 up, 500 down before making the next assumptive move right into the close of the week. Um, so that's all to say we're still going to get these headlines circulating. We're still going to get um, you know, continued headlines. One of the major reasons last night, I don't know if you guys are aware, that you saw markets rebound was when we had that presser with with uh, uh, President Trump it, uh, and um Vice President Pence, they essentially alluded to the fact that there is an ongoing discussion for an economics package. 
a coronavirus stimulus package, if you will. Um, whether that's by way of tax breaks, whether that's by way of some sort of aid for those who are um, not able to work from home, those jobs that needed to be in person, if they need to work from home or if they need to leave work where a paycheck literally won't come, um, he used this as an example on how they're looking to address that scenario. That's all good and dandy, right? Uh, price action is price action. If we're going to look at what happened last week, I still would be very, very um, cautious here. Okay, I still think they get a lot more chop sideways, jackknife moves before the next major break. All right, that's a mouthful, but DXY, uh, kind of murky as mud right now, but the levels at least are clear. Don't really like how price action is forming. There's not really a clean formation, but we need to make these levels apparent. Here's what uh, Euro looks like. And the last Euro update was on the 5th. Okay, so <clears throat> here's what the weekly chart looked like right into, uh, uh, this is on the 5th of the month. Uh, we were just breaking critical resistance right here, 111.70, 111.86, right? Testing the objective yearly opening range highs, that's 122.20s or 112.20s, right? And here's the pop, ran right through. Major resistance that we that we were looking for was right here at 14.45, 14.57. We overshot that, right? But that's still the level of resistance to be on a weekly close basis. It's a basic 38.2 of the drop. It's last year's open. It's former slope support turned resistance. Watch this level here today, or excuse me, this week, right? You guys have seen this weekly chart before. Daily chart looks like this. Right, so that assumptive slope that we threw on last week didn't really pan out too much. You got some play there at the 75% line. Even at the failure there, looked pretty convincing. Here's the pop higher. 1445, 1457, still key resistance. So surprised to see a little pullback here? No. A little bigger than expected? Sure. It's quick and quick. But you're looking for, look, let me take this back. Essentially to fill the Friday gap you'd need to move down to here, 112.99. Um, where is my tool? I'll just put it right in the close right here to give you the exact level, 112.85, uh, right? That was Friday's close that we haven't filled yet. That's what would be needed to fill the gap on a pullback. I'm going to keep that as near-term bullish inbound, okay? It's also along, this, along the slope of that parallel. So if we're going to get a pullback, that's where I'd want to find support before resumption. Um, Expect chop, guys. I talked to you about this yesterday in the webinar. I've been favoring shorts off of uh, 1445 uh, since the open. Uh, I'm not holding anything at all at this point. Uh, the July open was last target 1360. So looking for um, a rebound uh, of some sort to get back in for a deeper pull. Um, if you get a pull back into 1409, I mean, it's still going to be a big stop, but use that accordingly. At the end of the day, it's Tuesday, and we've essentially set a weekly opening range just below the high day close from last year. All right, so no assumptions in playing anything outside the range, outside of this formation. It's still constructive, well, above 1285, although I do favor a pullback there. Um, and we'll look for a reaction there. I mean, if we get a decent opportunity uh, or some... Uh, technical factors pointing to exhaustion might be a decent entry. I just think things are kind of stretched here. Now, there's also supposed to be an announcement from President Trump later today with regards to the stimulus, uh, which was kind of caught flat-footed by the markets off surprise. I mean, yesterday, uh, when those comments came out, like 6.30, I think, um, you saw futures markets are already pricing in like a 300-point pop in, in SPX. It's, it's, it's very interesting to see how the markets are kind of like waiting for some sort of relief information with regards to the virus, uh, which only seems to be getting worse here. So I'm going to clean up 1412. 
So no change to the levels, 1360. Yeah, we'll leave that. That's the July open. Okay, no change. We took out all of these levels. Look for 1360 at this point. Kind of scratch that. Look for this key level, 1285, 1299 um, as your near-term support zone and near-term bullish inbound. Top side resistance targets, 115, 1499. And the high close from last year, it's 1542. <clears throat> Questions, comments, or concerns on Euro? ECB is on tap. No change expected to the uh, main re refi rate. But again, we'll see what the commentary is with regards to the impact that they're seeing in Europe on account of the virus. Risk is for a little bit of a pullback before we look for a resumptive position. All right, that is number two. Number three, here's British Pound. And I covered this last night because um, to me, uh, there was a resistance zone here worth paying attention to. Uh, let me take you back to the weekly chart. Nothing really to write home about here. The only thing I wanted to highlight is the key zone for sterling on the bigger scale. Um, you have the 20, uh, 20 open, the objective open right here at 32.50. We didn't quite make it on this stretch. Okay, and then the high we close at 33.35. Both really sweet targets on the upside. The immediate advance though looked risky. And the reason that it looked risky is because we were coming into the zone of resistance right here. 6.8 retracement of the decline off the highs we made late last year. The objective February open. And then very simple former slope support, two point touch, break, resistance, converges right there. Add, add to that on the near term slope. This is just some parallels, guys. Nothing fancy. Some parallels off the load. We were looking at this ascending channel. There's the breakout. You saw an accelerated move. Same slope, extended off the late highs from February. Saw a two-point touch, was an exact touch yesterday. Here's what Sterling looks like now. Okay, so there's that zone of resistance. There's the pullback. The end of the day, we closed well below, okay, that January slope line. So whereas here we were testing much higher, we closed well below. We kind of settled right into that zone. Intraday. Whoops. This is the 120. You can't make this stuff up, guys. Look at this. Right? <clears throat> so you have two targets in mind based on time. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm coming down with a cold. Uh, 3026. 38.2 retracement, 30.24, longer dated 6.8 retracement. You know, based on where they are on slope, if it was going to be later on in time, that would be the more significant. At this point, we're there already, so this becomes the more significant level. And lo and behold, once again, we're flirting and talking 129.90. It's the same zone we talked about on the longs when we were playing the rebound, on the shorts when we were playing the short side. Here we are again. So... Look for support into the zone. If there's still more upside on this swing, we've already filled the Friday gap, so that gap play is over. You can get some drawdown here, but I'm looking for a bottoming above 29.90. We've reached back above the weekly open resistance at 30.80. You're looking for 31.76, 32.12, 32.50 on the upside. Again, I like it. Uh, I'm looking for a little bit more of an exhaustion low type of uh, trade before I get back on the long. So a wick, uh, you know, maybe a hold at 40 momentum on the intraday, maybe some divergence into a low and opening range break high to the upside on the US session, something um, before I try to fight this, but looking for a bottom in this zone. Broader bullish invalidation, the thing that would shift you straight bearish again is still 129, unfortunately. Uh, you got to open up the ranges just as the market ATR opens up. So at the end of the day, that's for me sort of my line in the sand for what would fundamentally change the technical picture here in your term for Sterling. Questions, comments?
Okay. Next is Swissy. Number four. Patrick, I think were you in the room yesterday on Daily Effects? Someone had brought this up. Um, I, had, I hadn't really written it there, but <laughs> we uh, we talked about it. Look, Dollar Swiss saw a massive break of downslope support, and that break fueled obviously what would be apparently the sharpest part of the decline so far uh, from the highs of the year. So here's Dollar Swiss on the daily chart. Um, here's Dollar Swiss on the weekly chart. Okay, big zone, big big zone. Finally cleared through it. Ran through the 618 of the entire 2018 rally, ran through a 100% extension off the high. So if this was corrective, you would have expected that to hold. That's gone. 2016 low, that's gone. Slope support all got taken out last um, last week. So here's the drop. That's your key resistance at this point. The low was right at the median line. So this is your world right now for Swissy. Critical weekly support comes in just lower. The confluence of that 38.2 retracement and a 6.18. 38.2 from the drop from the ascent off 2015. Six, uh, excuse me, a 6.18 from the ascent off 2015. A 38.2 from the ascent off of the 2011 lows. Both converge right there at 90. 80, 90, 90. So I love the weekly chart actually more than anything on this. But that being said, here's Dollar Swiss on the daily. We were working with this formation off the highs um, from June of last year and obviously the late May high. There's the 50 line or the 25% line. So 50 of this quadrant, the 25 of the whole formation right there. The lows from 2018 right there. Boom. And you saw a little bit of a bounce. We're seeing that bounce still. Risk is still no, lower below 94.52. This is a pretty decent zone of support if we're going to find it. Here's a near-term picture. Stripped it of everything. You know, we were working with a lot of slope earlier. If you go click on the previous report, guys, um, always have a link for the previous update. Here is what we were looking at. Oh, I think it went over this way. There was a mislink. Anyway, uh, on the dollar Swiss. Look at this slope, right into the start of the week. Basic parallel off the high, it's the same levels we've been looking at. One touch, two touch, three touch. Right? So, marking some divergence into the low, trading below slope support, former support now resistance. If we breach higher, look for rallying to the Friday close broader bearish invalidation still 95.42 but we want to see this hold ideally right we just came filled the gap and moved off key support still 91.87 on the downside and again 90 80 92 is the major level um, of support so looked like a decent play for a rebound um, you got the rebound, pretty stern reaction at that Friday close. Your weekly opening range is set. And I think despite the fact that it was a beautiful play with the break here, you had a nice long downside move, even off the rebound from key resistance, the 2018 open. Remember, we talked about that for a while. Um, that play was nice. At this point, I still think even if you get some upside, you need to watch that 94.52, uh, excuse me. Um, for resistance long story short it's a clean opening range setup and not only is it just an objective opening range setup it's an opening range setup right up against the lows well i guess it's easier to show you on the daily chart right against the lows right here from from 2018 and on the upside the gap resistance which we just filled look for a break of this immediate range ideal scenario ideal scenario just my humble opinion you see a little bit more support you bounce higher maybe for a tag of this slope line if not 95 uh, 94.52 and then failure 
uh, it's just so stretched. Now I say that with the recognition that you could have been saying it was so stretched back here. You could have been saying it's so stretched back here. You would have been getting massacred this whole time. But from a slope standpoint, from a timing standpoint, it's the 10th of the month. Um, you kind of look for that little give and take before you just make another straight shot lower. Especially if we're going to see a sentiment change because of fiscal stimulus. The Fed is shooting bullets. We've already seen 50 basis point cut, an emergency cut outside of a FOMC policy meeting. We have another FOM policy meeting on tap next week where the markets are still pressing in another 50 basis points. And then even later this year, markets are pricing in the possibility by the end of the year, we're either at 0 0.25 or uh, zero on rates. So the expectation for continued uh, easing is there. It doesn't seem to be buoying markets. That expectation is already being priced in. So at this point, the biggest impact that we'll have on market sentiment and broader risk assets would be from the fiscal side. So whether it's another interest, uh, whether it's another uh, tax break, whether it's some sort of fiscal stimulus plan geared towards more corona um, sensitive sectors, let's call it. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I think the fiscal side is really what the market's going to take bigger cues on, guys, as far as fixing sentiment. Okay. The Fed, I mean, you, you see what the result of an interest rate, 50, boys, 50 point interest rate cut. And yes, they are expected to cut. But again, if you look at Fed fund futures, that's already priced in. This is what markets are, are pricing in for next month, right? There is a 63 and 30, basically there's a 100 point chance that we're going to get, geez, another 50 basis point cut. 100% markets are pricing in with 63% pricing in 75 basis points in cuts. Do you guys see this? Right? So when you look at these expectations and I look on TV and I hear the talking heads talking about, well, you know, the Fed's going to have to come out with, uh, you know, cannons at this point to really buoy them. Well, it seems like markets are pricing in at, that in already. Doesn't seem like markets give a damn though. We just lost 2,000 points in the Dow yesterday. So take it with a grain of salt. And at this point, this is why I, I, I show you this with the reflection that it's just not going to be interest rate cuts that are going to fix this. Interest rate cuts aren't going to buoy demand, aren't going to prompt someone to get out and spend money they wouldn't otherwise would have wanted to do because of a health concern. So Definitely a trickier, trickier situation. If you look at heading into December to toward, toward the close of the year, what markets are pricing in as rates, um, you know, the majority see zero to zero point five percent on the benchmark rate. Pretty radical. Pretty radical. So with that in mind, what does that tell us for the gold trade? Well. Here's what gold looked like last night. And always remember, guys, I alternate the daily chart. So if you don't see the daily or weekly chart, you can click on the previous link and you'll always get that update. Um, takes you right to the article. So this is where we were on the weekly charts. Wanted to highlight 1670s, I think we quoted. Sixteen nineties. 1689, big level of resistance, right? Big level of resistance to the upper parallel. Yesterday's update, we took a look at this. We ramped higher, turned just ahead of the upper parallel, but we're now setting weekly opening range just above the median line. And if you take this out to uh, the longer term charts, you'll see what I'm talking about. Here's gold on the weekly, right? Look at that. Look at that. Brings to a close. Look at that. Jeez. And the markets are oblivious, right? People aren't paying attention to this, or the average retail trader isn't paying attention to this. And they're, oh, markets are down 2,000 points. It's got to break resistance. Let me just buy gold. 
doesn't work that way. We have to pay attention to where price is trading in, re in regards to broader trend. So a level we've been looking at for a while, right? This was the first major confluence region we looked at. It held right into the close of the year. Once that broke, we were looking at this slope, which is the dominant slope from the 2018 advance. Pivot, pivot, pretty darn close to a pivot, pivot. Right off the highs from 2018, we're testing that now. Watch the close. That's the weekly standpoint. Here, gold. <clears throat> Here's gold in a daily. All right? The big confluence zone is 1713. That's the 764 retracement from the all time record highs. Didn't quite make it there. Okay, that's the confluence zone. Divergence all up and down this thing, starting from the yearly open, right? January, February, and March, each high for the month marking a new divergent reference point. But the risk is there, right? Here's the intraday. This is a slope we've been following. Nothing changed from the lows back in January and the lows back in February 4th. Upper parallel resistance, lower parallel support. Here it is. Here it is. So not reflected here is that major resistance that we're looking at on the weekly chart, right? We're there. So here's the pullback into the median line. This is the focus that we're looking for, a break of this immediate zone, 1652 into 1713. I know you probably say to yourself, dude, that's a huge zone. That doesn't help me. Well, you're at uptrend median line support at this point. Trade accordingly. Trade accordingly. You guys know where I stand on this. On the advance here into the test of the upper parallel, I'm looking for a larger correction. Ultimately, it's a bullish trade any way you slice it. But man, we're going up against or we're coming off uptrend resistance. No change to any of these levels. Questions on gold? Okay, that is number five. Number six, uh, number six and seven, I don't even want to talk about, but I'm going to do it because I know some of you are following this religiously right now. Aussie and Kiwi. Look, I still like both of the setups. I just, you know, obviously the open was radical. Those wicks were absolutely insane. I mean, I guess it gives you a reference point to work against, but uh these have fallen out of favor again you know early in the week i thought these were or i think last week it was i thought this was going to come back into our um focus and specifically as we were checking 6660 i told you guys this from weeks ago that's my near-term bearish inval um you know what the hell was this candle yesterday so you know we failed on the upside there we failed on the downside 6341 which is just a soft target from way back in the day a former swing low from back in 2003 right so look point being uh you're looking for signs of basing i don't really like it here as far as a near-term trade setup on a range of this magnitude we this is like you know insane so i don't really have much to say on on dollar on aussie dollar guys unfortunately here's the near-term setup we were looking for a validation of a down of a up of a break of this downside formation. This was kind of messy, right, into last week's uh, close, but it looked pretty, it looked like I wanted to see the follow through late in the week when we closed at the weekly highs. Gap lower, obviously this debacle, but look at the failure you saw around 66.60, 66.62. Um, this is my problem with the trade. Would not, I did not want to see a reaction like that if we were going to get the breakout. Could be wrong. You could see another dip towards the low day close. Of course, that's not the low day close, but I don't want to give too much credence to this uh, candle yesterday. So let's just call it 6507. Uh, I want to see a hold there if we can, just above the figure. Um, but 6660 is still the level to beat. Look what happened there. Huge pivot in price. So I'm kind of shelving this right now. I told you that last night. 
um, just a stance. To, I'm just on the sidelines for both of these until we get a little bit more price action. Pistol to my head, looking for support ahead of 65 with a breach above 6660 needed to validate the reversal. Any questions on Aussie? You're basically looking at the same type of scenario here with Kiwi. Um, you know, again, you know, what's this? Um, here, 64.24, 64.07 was the level to beat. That was our near-term bearish invalidation level. Again, you got a stern reaction there yesterday on the test of that parallel with a break lower. Don't really know how to play it from here. I'm not going to put a stop against that low. Um, you know, obviously, that's not the low day close. We have a new low day close, which was last uh, night's close. Uh, and we're basically, that's resistance now. So same deal, guys. 64.25, we need to see break for a resumptive move on a, or a reversal move on a pullback lower, you know, 61.80, same level that we were looking at back here. That's the level that would need to hold. So looking for support, looking for signs of basing on Aussie and Kiwi. From this point, you're sitting right in the middle of a massive weekly opening range. I'll put this one on the sidelines for now. All right, so that's six and seven, Aussie and Kiwi. Not really the most convincing things at this point. Dollar Cat. Here's what Looney looks like. All right, so we were trying to look look for shorts again, 34, 35 last week. Um, that was the 2017 open, nice confluence resistance zone here with the upper parallel. What a gap higher. Obviously the oil debacle having a lot to do with that uh, on this pair. Here's the gap. Here's the push through critical resistance. Talk to you about this level for months, I think years at this point. Uh, 36, 47, 36, um, 85, it's the 618 retracement, the climb up the highs that we made back in 2016, it's the 2017 high day close. Literally caught the advance back into the close of 2018, start of 2019. Technically, yesterday we closed above it, right? Well, here we are trying to test this zone again. Dollar Cat is in the scenario where, like, it's either going to ride this breakout and this is going to be a massive breakaway or if the market does look to fill it, the washout, guys, it could be vicious. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. Uh, let me get you the 240 on this one. Got to go out a little further. So just look at this objectively. I know there's a lot of lines on this chart. Uh, we can drop this retracement null and void now. That's the broader 618 of that. That's null and void now. And let's just see. And that's null and void now. Let's just see what this retracement looks like. Okay, this is good. All right. So retracement, and this is making an assumption that that high is going to hold, but obviously we have a little bit of a long wick tail there. So I'm, I'm willing just to work with that for now. Um, first of all, you saw the 236 came in right here. I don't want you to focus on the May high as much as I want you to focus on the weekly open. Which is right here. Weekly open support, it's 3550. Okay. Near-term support or weekly open support at 3550. Watch that region specifically over the next couple of days. Um, 
2017 open 38 two retracement the near-term advance gives you 35 35 into 35 50 uh, 34 35 excuse me into 34 52 um now the interesting thing is to fill the friday gap it would actually require a drawdown deeper than that so just keep that in mind but basic long and short of it is the immediate threat is for a continued probe into the zone but you're looking for exhaustion it's the 618 guys a critical fibonacci level um again it bothers me that we did close above it yesterday so i'm very cognizant of that um that being said you know if we settle above this there's tons of room the next upside target wouldn't even be until that 2017 stretch high it's like 37.93 yeah So dollar cad not able to make the pullback, not able to get any type of momentum on last night's snapback off this region. Still think you want to be cautious while below 36.85. Um, you know, I'm flat on this one, but boy, what am I just continue to track it? You know, I just didn't see the conviction on this one. Questions, dollar cad. All right, so um, SPX, number nine, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up with a look uh, at crude. Well, I'm really not fancying doing anything on crude right now, but in any event, here's the SPX. What a move. And guys, the levels are so clockwork, uh, it's almost freakish. Here's SPX um, on the 8th, okay? Here's the levels that we were looking at on the daily chart. Key support zone, right? If you break below this, here's your drop. This is the next level of importance. The 618 retracement of the entire late 2018 rally. You also had the August low right there, right? Break, accelerated break. Obviously, a 2,000 point drop yesterday uh, in the Dow, a 7% drop here in S&P. Took you right into that zone. We closed just below. Look where the rebound's finding resistance right now. Can't make this stuff up. So we've essentially dropped from here, dipped into this zone, rebounded into, back into this zone. We're not out of the woods yet. Drop the August low is an important level here because we've already uh, kind of surged through that and drop it down on the scalp as well. But here is what the near term scalp look like. And here's what the Scalp look like back on the 8th, right ahead of the weekly open, right? Looking for exhaustion off of one of these two levels. The median line held as resistance, broke right lower. There's 28.21, and there's the August low at 27.73. Uh, Just remove that, 618 to 27.40. We're trading there right now on the rebound. So this formation is the same formation, guys. Nothing's changed. Looks pretty decent. Um, you know, that's the 120-minute chart. So let me show you the 120-minute here to give you some consistency. Okay. If we're going to see a little bit of recovery, I wouldn't be surprised as long as we're above 2740. Really important level. And again, just a quick reminder of, you know, the way this thing has continued to trade with just a massive sort of washout early on and then we sit in that range look for the range break and continue on um near-term resistance at this point i'm looking at the slope so right around here let's call it 28.85 and then 2018 high day close 29.30 still going to be a level of, of of significance in my in my opinion um possible level of, of exhaustion 27 February 28th of February and the March 5 low pitch fork 25% 75% lines are holding well Puja on which uh, asset is this right here yes SPX
how low are you going on the time frame there? Maybe I'm not getting your reference points. 30 minute. Oh, you're going on 30 minute. Let's take a look. And also the reference points because we're on a different time zone, Pooja. The 27th. Poss, yeah, definitely a poss, uh, possibility that is, just uh, off the lower parallel, there is a median line, and at the end of the day, it's reflecting the same levels, I love it, the same levels, so we just talked about 2085, that's exactly where your 75% line is here, um, this whole zone is massive at 2740, pretty nice precise break there, yeah, not bad, not bad, now I'm still rather default to this one um, that we've been following off the highs just on account of the parallels here have been freakishly good. Um, but that might be something to pay attention to. Let's clean this up. Don't need this. Don't need this anymore. Don't need this. Clean this up a little bit. All right. Yeah, it might be something worth worth, worth tracking. Um, the other slope that I was looking at here, um, if we take this back out to the 240 again, um, is basic slope off the high. Or let me take the 120. See what, what in magenta? Basic parallel of that move off the low. Again, converges on the 2018 open. It's 2671 on the downside. Not bad. Questions on SPX. <clears throat> now crude. So bottom line, you could see a little bit more recovery. 2930 is my line in the sand as far as trying to maintain a short stance on this. Um, so watch that today. Uh, crude, listen, there's really nothing to do here from a near-term standpoint. If you're an investor, you're looking for a longer term play, yeah, sure, you're fishing down here maybe. Um, what's the word I want to say? There's likely to be exogenous factors to come in and save this aside from price discovery. All right. Uh, and I base that on account of the fact that, guys, $40 a barrel is basically the break even for a lot of industry. A lot of energy sectors, a lot of companies, $40 a barrel is their break even on profit margins. Uh, 28 20 is just simply not sustainable. It's going to hurt a lot of uh, both domestic and international um, energy sector um, companies and markets. So uh, someone's going to come in and do something. If it's not Saudis and Russia sort of sitting down at the table finally hashing this out, it's going to be some sort of stimulus. It's going to be some sort of intervention from um, U.S., which has its own sort of stockpile at this point as well. Uh, but, you know, this is just not sustainable. A lot of companies are going to go out of business in the energy sector. So I'm of the mindset that you find some support uh, at some point down here. Now, the weekly chart does leave a little bit of risk if we close 70, if we close below the 78.6 retracement, 36.91 on a weekly standpoint. Like you're basically looking for the – I mean, you're already below the post-crisis lows. You're basically looking for the swing low uh, that we made back in 2016. Actually, that low we close comes in right – already below that as well, yeah. Point is um, – I'm not interested in chasing gold prices any lower. I'm watching this daily to see if we can find any support, scanning the headlines, see if there's any uh, ex external exogenous factors that are going to give this thing a lift. But at the end of the day, you're deep and oversold. It's in a panic sell-off. 
You've taken out big levels. The one solace was that 1618 extension. I think we added this in the webinar yesterday. I'm not sure uh, off the highs, which seems to offer it's a little bit of alleviation here. We'd need to get through 3916 just to get back into and above downslope support, which is hilarious. So still looking for a pivot if we get into that region at the end of the day, at the end of the day, guys, just stand aside on this one. It's not really worth it to play in the oil market at this point, in my opinion. All right. Uh, I want to apologize to you guys. My voice sounds a little coarse, um, <laughs> but uh, a little fighting, a little cold here. If you have any questions or trade setups, throw them on the message board now. If not, we'll go ahead and wrap things up for today. ECB is on tap tomorrow. Keep an eye on the euro. Um, you know, ultimately, ultimately for me, the ideal scenario on this trade is still for a little bit more of a pullback, even a spike, like into ECB for uh, a buy. Uh, you need to get through 1457, uh, 1445, that key resistance zone, the upside to mark resumption on this one. So keep your eyes poised here. Look for a deeper pullback for possible entries, and we'll look for the ECB to give us some guidance. Otherwise, um, it's off to the FOMC next week eventually. So we'll see if central banks have anything to say about this. Watch this uh, presser that's supposed to happen or this announcement supposed to happen from the Trump administration later today. Might have uh, definitely the impact uh, or the potential to really buoy sentiment at this point uh, with the massive drops that we've seen fiscal side scenario is really the bigger risk. Like I told you guys, that's where the markets could really find its legs. The Fed cutting rates is not going to bottom the market. Um, so just keep that in mind as we get deeper into this uh, week. Expect volatility, but expect also a lot of back and forth. So until we get a legitimate um, discovery or development in the coronavirus story, or again, a fiscal side stimulus package, you know, you're still basically just following um, price action. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Get well soon, says Pat. Hey, thanks for that. Pooja, Aurelian, Steve, Ted, Patrick, Kelly, Jay, Iman. Great to see you guys all in the room. And I will see you all on Thursday morning. Best of luck trading. Cheers.